In recent years, online and blended learning has been put to use frequently during periods when teaching face-to-face -face is impossible. E-learning has been used to maintain instruction during hurricanes, heavy snows, floods, fires. Educators have even continued to teach with online and blended learning during violent conflicts when traveling to schools becomes no longer safe. Communities often rally behind these efforts and view it as a best-case scenario with all things considered. That is not, however, always the case. In a recently published article, researchers interview professors from the University of Cape Town who were abruptly forced to take their courses online when protesters shut down campus. Though placed in a highly unique situation, their insights carry relevance for other online and blended learning responses to crises and for the pedagogy at large. Hi, my name is Henry Kronk for eLearning Inside. This is Ed Technically, our weekly podcast. This week, we are going to discuss a recently published article about the experiences of professors at the University of Cape Town during the Fees Must Fall protests in 2015 and 2016. So the University of Cape Town researchers Laura Cernowitz, Henry Totter, and Genevieve Haupt recently published the article titled Online Teaching in Response to Student Protests and Campus Shutdowns, Academics Perspectives in the International Journal of Education Technology and Higher Education. So some background for the conflict. Between the fall of the former apartheid South African government in 1994 and 2016, the undergraduate population in the country more than doubled, from 495,000 students to over 1.1 million. During this period, state financial support of public education was decreased. The gap was made up by a combination of service cuts and increased tuition and fees. In 2015, students at many universities in South Africa were facing tuition increases of 10% or more. Further, as the authors write, quote, This shifting of the financial burden away from the state towards the individual student coincided with the South African government's greater acceptance of a neoliberal understanding of higher education being more of a private good than a public one. End quote. Following the success and attention gained by the Roads Must Fall movement, protesters began organizing and demonstrating in 2015 at the University of Witwatersrand, with the aim of making higher education more accessible throughout South Africa. These protests soon spread to the University of Cape Town, Rhodes University, and before long throughout institutions of higher education in the country at large. Protesters' tactics ranged from peaceful demonstrations and occupations to violence and property destruction. In all, the protests lasted a year from October 2015 to more or less October 2016, when former uh, President Jacob Zuma announced there would be no fee increases in 2016 and that higher education for poor and working class families would be made free. The University of Cape Town campus was closed numerous times during the year of protest, both by protesters themselves and the administration as a security measure. Both the Department of Higher Education and the UCT administration put heavy pressure on professors to continue teaching remotely using the school's learning management system and other digital ways of communicating. On the one hand, every professor the researchers interviewed for this article wanted to continue teaching. They viewed it as a duty to the students who were on their way to graduation, and also to those who did not want to participate in the protests. What's more, many were curious or enthusiastic about the potential of blended learning. But on the other hand, they chafed at the mandate 
CTU professors maintain a high degree of autonomy when it comes to instruction and pedagogy. As one who was interviewed for the article put it, quote, everybody would be keen to explore those blended learning strategies if it wasn't with a sort of gun against your head, end quote. The mandate caught many off guard. While some had been incorporating online elements into their courses already, others were forced to start from scratch. Professors were not given the luxury of testing blended learning out. Most, if not all, believed their instruction suffered as a result. On the student end, the experience wasn't seamless either. For one, not all learners had the tools or the capacity to make the switch themselves. As one professor said, quote, a lot of poor students don't have laptops and tablets and that sort of thing, so definitely the so-called digital divide came into play, end quote. For this reason, some thought that blended learning even increased inequity in outcomes during this time. As one professor put it, quote, I think the university has definitely got a culture that is not conducive to including everyone, and I think the blended learning makes it worse. If anything, it excludes people who are upset already, end quote. In addition, some expressed fears that blended learning would get a bad rap because of the circumstances in which it was introduced. Others still thought it would give the university a bad rap uh, for the lack of quality in education that they all perceived and noted. But importantly, blended learning took on ideological and political dimensions during the Fees Must Fall movement. As the authors write, quote, many academics were sympathetic to the demands of the protesters for free decolonial quality education, and there was particular concern regarding the financial burden for poor students, end quote. Blended learning as a result dulled the effects of the protests by allowing education to continue. At the same time, professors, for the most part, did not approve of the tactics taken by the protesters. Others still fell somewhere in the middle. One professor is quoted saying, quote, The more we make it normalized that we go online and stuff, the more we normalize the protest things, the more we say, okay, don't worry, they're going to shut down campus, and I kind of do feel that there should be a message that this is not normal, and that more and more students should feel outraged at what they are experiencing. The fact that 200 students or so can hold the whole campus hostage is ridiculous. And it is probably because we have been, we have been normalizing this protesting." End quote. In their paper, the UCT researchers demonstrate how online and blended learning at their institution brought about numerous consequences and unintended results. They show how the pedagogy and use of technology is not always an unproblematic panacea for campuses in crisis. This has been Ed Technically. My name is Henry Kronk. I work as the editor of eLearning Inside. If you like this episode, please rate and review it. If you'd like to hear more, please subscribe. Also keep in mind that this show is available as a video on our YouTube channel and also as a podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. Also Spotify and Google Play. The basic content for this video first appeared as an article on eLearning Inside, and if you would like to learn more about online courses, technology in the classroom, and edtech in general, feel free to check out our site. If you'd like to get in touch with me, please send an email to henry at elearninginside.com. You can also follow us on Twitter, at elearninginside. Thanks for listening.